Hey guys, Ben here. I've had a few people asking me, how can you spot a cheap watch? I'm assuming in an attempt to decide whether a watch that they've got or that they're considering buying is worth the money or not. So today, I'm gonna run you through a really basic watch analyzing strategy. So if you're a beginner to this watch thing, then you can make some better decisions when buying watches. Keep watching. I'm going to interpret a cheap watch as a watch that is generally considered bad quality compared to the retail price that you're paying for it. Usually these are watches that have a gigantic markup from their real production costs. All watches have markups, but these ones really take the biscuit. For the sake of this video, and to give us some reference point, we'll say you've got a budget of 200 pounds. The more of these five points the watch hits, the more likely it is that you have a cheap watch on your hands. Even some of the best brands out there will have one or two of these, but if the watch is getting up there to four or five, it might not be worth pulling the trigger. Number one, low tier movement. The movement is the mechanism that powers the watch. It's the heart of the watch. Most watches under the 200 pound mark use some form of battery powered quartz movement. If you're not familiar with these, these are just the watches that you see ticking once every second. But these quartz movements really vary in terms of price and quality. If the watch features some type of unnamed quartz movement, maybe the brand isn't willing to say what's actually inside the watch, chances are you've got some sort of generic Chinese quartz movement on your hands. These are mass produced and are often of the lowest quality possible. They have a tendency to break down rather quickly and sometimes have a particularly loud tick that is audible from a distance. These movements can retail for as low as a couple of pence when bought in bulk. So they tend to be a popular choice for brands looking to cut as many costs as possible. Alternatively, lots of brands these days opt for the more marketable Japanese quartz movement. These are often advertised as a key selling point as if they were some indication of high quality. Most of these movements, usually produced by Miyota, are only marginally better than their Chinese-made counterparts. If the brand in question is still ramming these movements in watches around £100, even approaching £200, then it's a naughty decision in my eyes. If there's a movement that you're not familiar with, the great thing these days is you can just do a quick Google search. You can quickly see how much these are to buy individually, and it's safe to assume these brands can get them for even less when purchased in bulk. If they're charging you 200 quid for a watch with a three pound movement inside, it might not be worth it. Better value watches out there might have slightly more expensive and reliable Swiss quartz movements instead. Or in some cases, even around these lower price brackets, the watch might even have a mechanical movement inside. These cost much more to produce and require far more craftsmanship as well. They also give the watches a smooth sweeping second hand and often contain a glass exhibition case back, allowing you to see that beautiful movement within. This is the reason that these are often the go-to choices for enthusiasts. Number two, generic design. Something else that's surprisingly easy to check is the design of the watch. A lot of the watches that you'll come into contact with these days have completely generic designs that have either been lazily ripped off from other brands or are ordered from Chinese wholesalers. This is especially worth looking at if the brand in question isn't one that you're particularly familiar with. Maybe it's a bit of an obscure brand. Larger brands like your Casios or Seikos have in-house design teams, which is why their watches often look so unique. Or at least they aren't clones of other watches. Any watches that look exactly the same as these that you can find on Chinese wholesalers, they're probably just copies. Whereas lots of startup brands, they don't have the capital to build this infrastructure. It's worth quickly searching Chinese wholesale sites like AliExpress or Alibaba to see if the exact design is already out there. If the watch you're considering reappears on this site, it's likely that's where they're being shipped from. This is a major sign that the watch is cheap and that you're overpaying. Number three, poor quality leather. Admittedly, this is definitely lower on the scale of importance compared to some of these other factors. However, it's always frustrating when you get a watch that's got a rubbish strap on it. If you're not familiar with leather products, it can be difficult to initially judge how good or bad a strap is. Here are a couple of things to look out for. Cheap straps tend to suffer from substantial folding and creasing, even with very little usage. In the most extreme cases, the top layer of the leather might start peeling off. You might also see references to certain grades of leather on people's websites and stuff. This gives some sort of indication as to what part of the animal hide is used in the creation of the leather. 
genuine leather as seen in loads of places is actually a low tier of leather. Sounds good on paper, in practicality it often isn't. Admittedly, I have reviewed some genuine leather straps that have been good quality, although many of them are terrible and they look ruined after a few years. It's definitely the choice of a brand that are looking for something that's marketable a bit because genuine leather sounds good, but in practicality it doesn't perform that well most of the time. If a brand is willing to step up to something better like top grain leather or full grain leather, then chances are the strap is probably quite decent. This is an indication that the brand isn't skimping on materials. Nevertheless, some good watches do come with terrible straps. That being said though, it's just another factor to be aware of. And when combined with multiple others, it might indicate a cheap watch. The go-to choice for cheap fashion watches these days is just cheap mineral glass. In some cases on the super cheap end, like those watches you see in fashion stores or supermarkets, the brand might opt for just a piece of plastic. However, that seems to be becoming a bit more rare nowadays as brands move to the more marketable mineral glass. Now, mineral glass is a step above plastic and it does offer some limited scratch protection. Nevertheless, it's absolutely dirt cheap to buy these online and in my opinion, doesn't really add much to the value of a watch. It really frustrates me when I see watches around the 200 pound mark with just a flat piece of mineral crystal in. If you've got domed mineral glass as found on some affordable watches, this does require more effort to create and it costs more to produce. Personally, I like the look of these and I tend to treat them a bit differently as a result. But what most people should probably be looking for is sapphire glass. Some watch brands offer this on their watches for under £200, which is nice. This is significantly more scratch resistant than mineral glass and is practically impossible to damage. This glass costs more to put into the watch, especially if it's domed, and it's not exactly expensive still, so it's nice when brands will actually make the effort and chuck this in. But if it's just a flat piece of mineral glass, don't let brands convince you that that is some sort of luxury feature, because that's far from the case. This next one is something to kind of look out for, but it's also like a general tip for you to implement too. A small red flag for me is when a watch is from a brand that doesn't normally make wristwatches. Either that or it's from a brand that has very little history or reputation for making good watches. This is something that I definitely take into account, especially if you're newer to this sort of thing. In my opinion, it's probably worth going for brands that specialize in watches and stick to brands that you know have that good reputation from unbiased sources. While there are some good micro brands out there, a lot of them just pass off terrible cheap Chinese watches as premium. From the consumer's perspective, in many cases, these larger brands have bigger manufacturing infrastructures in place, which means that they can usually offer better quality goods at lower prices than smaller brands. It's just kind of like this economies of scale thing. I found this is especially true when dealing with brands that might specialize in something like clothing instead. I've seen a bunch of terrible wristwatches hanging up in places like River Island or Burton. It's because these brands just ship in generic watches directly from China, you know, they're not actually making or producing the watches themselves. Not in the way you and I would think about them anyway. They just whack their own packaging on them, probably worth avoiding in my mind. 